Hello everybody. <clears throat> I'm going to have some fun and just play on a piece of watercolor paper. I have 11 by 14 inch watercolor paper here. I pulled out my pattern play block stamps. These are from Iron Orchid Designs and they are cling stamps. There's nine different patterns, so I put them on my big stamping block, and I'm going to stamp. There are a few that I didn't use. I think these patterns will kind of go together okay. I wasn't sure about the rest of them with these, um, and it'll leave me some space to play around and do some other things. So I'm going to put some color on this paper first and then once again no plan other than putting these on the block. So we'll see. I may take my paper down too because I don't want it to curl. So I'll be back. Okay I brought my glass mat back, taped my paper to that and I'm going to just use clear gesso and get a barrier layer down on the paper. I'm hoping this paper doesn't buckle too badly because it's probably going to be throwing a lot of wet stuff okay, at it. Okay, the paper is a little bit buckled, so this could end up being a disaster. This is, so you know, this is Canson watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, cold press. I don't know. It was just a coat of gesso, and we've already got pretty decent sized buckles. Like, if I put water on this, it would puddle right there. I'm not happy. But, what are you going to do? I'm just going to get just some swatches, kind of, of color going across there. Look at the bristles on this brush, you guys. Can you see that? <laughs> That's not good. And they're falling out. Look at this. Look at that. Oh my, time for the trash pecan. Yeah, we can't have that. That was a Langnickel brush too. I should really complain because I take good care of my brushes. This happened when it was wet and I put it down in my brush holder and it must have got caught. But this, all these bristles coming out, that shouldn't be happening. Not with a decent brush. Hold standby. These are old, old, old brushes. These are Royal Aqualon. I like them a lot. I'm going to grab some water here. I have Liquitex acrylic in blue-gray. Really pretty color. And just some Americana paint in coral blush. And I'm just going to water it down a little bit and I'm just gonna kind of do this just kind of get that sort of 50s remember you don't remember <laughs> 50s countertops had like this kind of a pattern in the background and then it had they had like those boomerang shapes and some of you might remember. I certainly do. We had a kitchen full of it with our chrome legged Formica top table and yeah. Oh for the good old days. Just getting to the edges here. pretty color <clears throat> it's a pretty color combination my voice the last <clears throat> couple of days is kind of crazy
starting to get that old lady voice. <laughs> Not funny. I don't want it. Okay guys, this paper was really starting to buckle badly, so I released it from the tape, I turned it over, sprayed it with just clear water, and just stretched it like this with my hands until I felt it going back flat again, flipped it over, did the same thing on this side, tried to manipulate it a little bit like that where the worst of the buckles were. It's flatter. It's still a little bit buckled. So I'm not sure if I should tape it back down. I might just tape the corners just to hold it. I have this nice border and it's going to get ruined even though I got it too um, narrow here. These sides are good. This one's narrower, but you know, whatever. It's just play. I am going to just tape these corners. Let me make sure I'm in frame here for you. Let me just tape it down this way just to hold it while I'm working on it so that it's not moving all over the place on me. I have a feeling it's just going to continue to buckle. I probably should have stretched the paper first, but didn't really think with acrylics and gesso that that should be necessary, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's still buckled. Okay, onward. We'll just ignore it as much as we can. So I am going to load this up with Payne's Gray, I think, and then I'll just stamp it, or should I go this way and then repeat it? Maybe I'll do that. We'll go to the edges. Let's see. Figuring out <clears throat> where I want to line it up for paint. So not this edge. And we'll come all the way over there, just not down here. All right, I'll be back. Alright, I have a feeling that some of this paint, by the time I got the beginning paint, the ending paint on the beginning paint was already drying, so we'll see what we get. Sorry if my head's getting in there. I don't know. I'm going to be surprised if we get a good print. Just because I think the paint was getting pretty dry. Let's see what we got. No, oh, that's good. So then, if I turn this around, that would be lined up there. So I'll take this one off. And we will, let's see, is that right? And this middle one. That'll give me the four corners open and take those off. I think that's right. That's kind of like measuring. I'm not good at that. <laughs> All right, I'm just dipping a sponge. This is how I did the other one in the paint and just getting it on the stamp. Put way too much paint out there. And I'm not concerned about like a perfect, that's pretty good, but I'm not concerned about getting an absolutely perfect print like if there's little pieces missing or whatever because I just think that kind of lends itself to the whole look of retro vintage whatever 
So now we're going, where are we going? Um, I was going here, yeah. So, try to line that up as best I can. There. Lots of pressure. Because so far, so good. So, I'd like for this one to come out too. Just leaving it in contact with the paper for a period of time to give it a chance to transfer. That's always a good sound. Okay, not lined up so good there. Or here. Let's see what we can do about that. Um, I probably should just leave it alone, but you know me. I'm going to try to fill that in. So that would be right there. Alright, I'm going to go down here too and try and get this a little bit better. And there went my border. That's alright. Mm. I'm going to do more on top of this, so I probably shouldn't be too concerned. But, you know... It's the perfectionist in me. Sometimes it comes out. Alright, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to clean the paint off of these stamps and I'll be back. Okay, I decided I'm really going to play. So I just cut some circles and I taped off across these empty squares in the corners. And I'm just going to play with shapes a little bit here and just add some shapes and lines and that's what I'm doing. Oh and I went around the edges with some watered down paint gray and just because I had that overlap of the stamp at the bottom that ruined the border so I thought you know what I'm just going to fill it in and give it a tint of blue all the way around. my paper dark on it. Remember always pull your tape off at a 45 degree angle. Got a little bit of pull up right there which I did not want to have happen. If you go that way you're way less apt to rip the paper. And grab my baby wipe and I'm just going to try to smooth that out a little bit right there. So, kind of like that. They're all different widths. They're not perfect. Oh, I missed this one over here. Get it while it's still sort of wet and I can clean it up a little bit. Then I have light blue left here. Let's use some of that. I'm going to go on top of this and around the outside of it. And I just, I cut this one and then cut the middle out of it out of a file folder. And the more times, oops, the more times I use it, and it gets covered with paint, the sturdier it will become. I can use that over and over again. That's kind of cool. I like the rough edges on that too. And I could freehand some circles on here as well. Let's 
Let's see. Let's go right here. You just let your brush spread out and just kind of twirl the handle, pivot it. Should get a decent circle. My tweezers. Yeah, works for me. I'm just going to kind of lightly fill it in. I want to still be able to see what's underneath it. Then I do have a tiny bit of coral left. Might as well use it up. I'm getting goobers in there. I'm just going to use a wash so I can see what's here or what's underneath here. This was the top of a tissue box. One of those cube ones that has the plastic slits crossed. I just ripped the top off and took the plastic off and cut a rough circle out of that. Garbage is good. Right. I just took a piece of file folder and a paper punch and punched some holes in it. I'm going to go partially onto this. Let's go this way. Partially onto this stripe. Partially not. I'm going with my finger. Fingers are great tools. This goes really fast. They're just basically touching each hole and filling it with paint. I am enjoying myself. Hope you're not bored. I have this old, old, old foam stamp. It's just a spiral. And I think, just trying to decide what color I want. I'm going to go with the dark Payne's gray. Make sure I have enough on there. Goober. Okay, and then I just, I got smart. I put a piece of the file folder down here because I'm going to go partially off of this edge. And I like this stamp because you never get, it's like not perfect, perfect. Yes, I like that a lot. Let's put another one up there. Because we can. Okay. Let's go off this edge a little bit too. There. And just, I don't know if there's enough paint left on here to go again, but I'm going to go right there just a little bit because, yeah, not very much. All right, I wonder if I can line that up. <laughs> sure I can. Let's see. Can't see it very much, so even if it's not perfectly lined up. It's okay. I'll get a little ghosting going on there. And there, that's good. Perfectly fine. I've got this homemade stamp. It's just a piece of wood that I put string around. Let's go with that. Maybe we'll put it right there over top of that pink with the Payne's Gray. 
see what we get. Yeah, this paint's pretty wet, so we'll see. Oh, it doesn't smear too badly. Whatever we get is okay. Some days you just have to really, really go for it and just play. Oh, yeah, I like that. Perfectly imperfect. I might get a little ghost over here. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. About right there. Just a bit. That's probably all I'm going to get out of that. And that's enough. I like my uneven numbers of elements, so three little spots with those lines are good. Have yeah, this, I have no idea. It was in my dad's stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it here in the middle of that circle with the coral color. See what we get there. I'm going to kind of pat a lot of paint on there and go for some texture, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. I know I've used this before, but it's been a long time, so I don't remember if I got anything good. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I like it. I'm going to go right here. And grab a baby wipe. Should have put my paper down. That's all right. I don't even mind that little bit of coral on top of that. And one more spot. Let's go up here. just the taste of it right there. That's good. This is one of my favorite mark making tools. It's just a big really heavy duty spring. Also from Dad. And I'm trying to decide what's gonna... I don't want too much dark but it seems like the dark for all these marks is basically what's going to show up. I need more paint. Is it going to be dark? You just get the paint on the spring and it's messy because you get it all over your hands. And if you don't go all the way around, you're going to get skips. I'm not getting it all the way to one end because that's where I'm holding on to it, but let's see what we get here. Let's go from here crossed. There. See? <laughs> now I can go back the other way. This way. And maybe get a little bit of a check going. Yeah. Well, the other thing I have is the negative of this circle. I could get a solid circle here. Let me cut this. <clears throat> And put that there, and put this there. And let's go coral here. 
I'm just going to hold it down. We had some goobers in there. That's good. Yeah, maybe I'll do another one up here. Well, that moved. Gotta hold them both. Get a little water. This one, I think. Once I get the paint on here, I'm going to grab my baby wipe and kind of wipe it out a bit and let some of that pattern back through. Okay, just kind of a shadow there. And then I'm going to line this back up if I can and put my dots back on the circle. And I'll put another one up here. I need five. There. I'm liking this. It needs something. But my eye's not telling me what it needs. Maybe I just grab a white Posca pen and just start doodling on it. I'm going to give it a good dry and think about it for a All second. Right. I put some little shadow circles in just to kind of fill in a little bit. I just did it with the brush, just freehanded it. I have this set of border stamps. It's Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous Classics number no. 6. And I'm going to use this one and go all Already around the edge. I have my Dilution stamp block here, and I have Distress Oxide in Faded Jeans. That's the closest blue that I have. My other blue is too purple, so we're going to just go with it. So glad I did my nails. It's kind of fun. I would have liked it better if it was darker, but this one's going to either hang off or go onto the painting part because my border is narrower there. I might go back all those little dots on that border, I might just go back and hit each dot with the white Posca pen, maybe. I'm not sure. We'll see. I'm going to overlap that a little. Yeah, I like it better a little bit lighter. I kept the tape at the top because I thought it would help my paper not move. I got paper coming up on that corner too. Doggone it. Maybe the border stamp will cover it up. Yeah, I better not. Let's see. I need just a tiny little bit of watery Payne's Gray. I'm just going to take it out of the lid here. Get most of it out of the brush and just touch that up a tad because if it's too white and the border doesn't cover it up, that'll do. It's just gonna glare at me. 
Okay, so now I can turn this, which will make it easier for me to stamp it. down this edge here. So let me bring that closer so you can see the stamping. What it really looks like. It's just kind of fun. I like it. And there we go. Get it on the black for you. So I'm kind of thinking maybe it should be done or maybe I'll come back with a white paint pen and I probably will do that. It just needs little touches here and there. So I will have some stills at the end and you can see whatever finishing touches I put on it. So I'm glad you joined me today. I hope you had fun watching. I hope you got some ideas and some inspiration for just getting in your art space and just, just play. Pull out a whole bunch of supplies and just play. Just make a pattern. Now, I will probably at some point end up just ripping this up and using it for collage, I suppose. I mean, it's not so precious that I'm going to run out and get it framed or anything. But it was fun to do and kind of, you know, engages your brain a little bit as you start to build it. Like, oh, what do I want to do next? Or what would look good with this or that? So it was fun. Thanks for coming along. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, share it out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit my red button and ring my bell and you'll be notified every time I um, upload a new video. Make sure you hit all when you ring the bell. There's three options there. You won't get notifications for every video unless you select all. And that's it. Thanks a lot. See you later. Go make some art. Bye.